Hello students, welcome to the lecture on product branding decision and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the concept of brand, explain the role of brand, discuss about brand loyalty, describe the challenges of product branding, explain the strategic branding decision. We define product decision as every conscious decision made by a company for a product. There are many different such decisions. At one extreme, there are such things as the minor modifications of the label or color of the package. Brand is a collection of images and ideas representing an economic producer more specifically. It refers to the concrete symbols such as a name, logo, slogan and design scheme. Brand recognition and other reactions are created by the accumulation of experiences with a specific product or service, both directly relating to its use and through the influence of advertising, design and media commentary. Let us now discuss the concept of brand. Brands make life easier for people because when we encounter a familiar brand, we do not have to test, challenge classify and critically weigh up this product because as a familiar brand we know what this brand stands this is also the reason why when people go to a different country where the food is very different many people will go and eat at a mcdonald's or burger king because it is familiar and people know what one will get no surprises Brand awareness. Brand awareness is an important element in creating a brand and creating customer for the brand. Without brand awareness, the consumers cannot or will not buy the brand because they are simply not aware of the brand's existence. Brand awareness measures how many people that knows what the brand stands for and also knows what the brand promises. There are four levels of brand awareness. Top of mind, brand recall brand recognition and awareness of brand top of mind 
If a brand has a top of mind level of awareness, then the brand is the first brand which comes into the mind of the consumer within a specific product category. Brand recall. The brand is spontaneous name in the product category, but it is not the first brand that is mentioned. Brand recognition. With this level of awareness, the consumer only recognizes a brand and which product category it belongs to. When the consumer is tuckered by some external factors. Women and newborns worldwide have a powerful new ally. Introducing Modernova, the first global innovation marketplace and information sharing network delivering solutions to improve maternal and newborn health. A common misconception is that minimizing childbirth risks has to be difficult and expensive, but maternal safety doesn't have to be overly complicated. In fact, our solar-powered headlamp is just one of our unconventional tools that saves lives daily. Modernova was recently named one of America's top 25 social entrepreneurs. We find cutting-edge, low-cost innovations which make childbirth safer in low-resource settings. Low-cost stretchers, anemia detectors, infant warmers. Think this is just a sticker? It's not. It's our exclusive thermospot stick-on thermometer to detect hypothermia. We test products, we package them, we ship and distribute them to high need areas. Then we get feedback from the field to improve products and add new ones. Our customizable obstetric packs combine high demand products so we can save more lives. From Haiti to Honduras, from Tanzania to East Timor. We believe sharing real-time advice from those in the field is key to advancing the mission. Whether you're a clinician or development worker, entrepreneur or researcher, our interactive online platform connects people searching for the best and easiest ways to save lives. Here you can access our products, purchase them, review them and help improve patient outcomes. Leading enterprises have already given us their support, including Women Deliver, who called us a leading innovator. Visit us online at modernova.net to register now. Brand Attitude According to Kotler and Keller, brand attitude is evaluation of the brand with respect to its perceived ability to meet a current relevant need. Some brands' needs are negatively oriented as in being problem-solving or problem avoidance. This could, for instance, be a household cleaning product. Product or brand life cycle theory. The theory of product or brand life cycle, PLC, states that products or brands will all go through an introduction growth, maturity and a decline stage. After the decline stage, the product or brand will go out of the market. They further claim that even though the company behind the brain goes out of business or in another way disappears. The branding process. The branding process consists in the following basic stages. Establishing the branding goals, creating the brand team, delivering the brand strategy document, concept development, execution stage one establishing the branding goals this is a simple list of deliverables spelling out the desired outcome of the branding exercise the branding might have the objective to increase awareness in a company or its products increase acceptance or perhaps improved customer retention stage two creating the brand team the brand needs to communicate on an emotional level it is an attempt to capture life feelings in an artistic manner. The information collected needs to go beyond secondary research, print, digital, which is informative but not engaging. Stage 3. Delivering the brand strategy document. In the initial stages, the branding agent's role is simply to facilitate these discussions, lead interviews, gather information and manage the whole project. Eventually, the role of the agent evolves into highlighting similarities in all these different experiences and unveiling emotional connections that should be reflected by the new brand. The organizational history. The history of the organization is critical in understanding the trajectory of the business from its inception to its present moment. The milestone related to the organization past Successes and challenging moments will reveal much about the values and the culture of the business. Key Business Messages It is equally important to consider past marketing and PR messages. This effort gives an idea for the content, voice, tone of the existing brand, if any, and what was the sales outcome. 
perception of past messages. If the budget allows, it is informative to see what the perception of past messages was among some key stakeholders, their likes and dislikes, and to what degree the intended effect has been achieved. Profile of target audience. The background of the target audience is important. Competitive mapping. Brands do not exist in a vacuum. They compete with other brands for the attention of the target audience. The brand positioning exercise needs to take into account the existing competitive landscape in order to create a brand identity that is distinctive amongst competitors and relevant to the target market. Concept development. The creative development stage has a clear purpose. Translate the brand strategy document into an emotional experience. Marketing ultimately works because it touches everyone on an emotional level. There is no place to hide from the humanity within. This is why marketing heraldic done right delivers infallibly. Let us now discuss role of brands. The following are the roles of branding which serve many purpose. A brand identifies a seller or maker. A brand protects both the consumer and the producer from competitors who would attempt to provide products that appear to be identical. A brand reduces the primacy of price upon the purchase decision. It accentuates the basis of differentiation. A brand is essentially a seller promised to consistently deliver a specific set of features, benefits and services to the buyers. A brand gives the seller the opportunity to attract a loyal and profitable set of customers. Strong brands help build the corporate image, making it easier to launch and gain acceptance by distributors and customers. Managing a positive brand image creates opportunities to introduce new products that build on brand equity. It helps to attract and retain good employees and improves the stockholders. Brand Extension A brand extension is when a company uses an established brand name to introduce a new product either in a new product category or as a line extension of the current product. Let us now discuss brand loyalty. Brand loyalty is an important part of this, so therefore, a definition of this seems appropriate. However, authors have very different definitions of what brand loyalty is. The degree to which a consumer consistently purchases the same brand within a product class, a behavioral intention to buy a brand of product and to encourage others to buy that brand. Differences between brand image and brand personality. Many authors have written about brand personality and brand image. Some distinguish between the two concepts and others see them as relatively the same. Brand image and brand personality are somewhat the same concept. A brand's image gives it its perceived personality. Throughout the thesis, brand image and brand personality will be considered as the same. Brand extension. A brand extension is when a company uses an established brand name to introduce a new product, Kotler, either in a new product category or as a line extension of the current product. Brand personality. The definition of brand personality by Aker and Bale, it is the way in which a consumer perceives the brand and dimension that typically capture a person's personality extended to the domain brand, which is interesting since the consumer takes human traits and apply them to a brand. Marketing mix. 
acre and bale say that brand personality is something which is created over a longer time period by the marketing mix of the brand. Marketing mix, also known as the four P's, consists of four parameters, product, price, placement and promotion. Brand Charisma We can use Brand Charisma theory to explain why consumers are willing to pay a premium for a product which is not necessarily superior to other products which are similar to the charismatic brand. The relevance of Brand Charisma one can't find from the quote from Livid. No organization can achieve greatness without a vision that can produce eager followers in vast numbers. In business, the followers are the customers. Brand Gender most brands or products are perceived as having a gender. Therefore, marketers must find out what kind of gender the brand or product is perceived to have by the consumer. In that way, it will be easier for the marketers to select the most suitable visuals and text copy for the marketing message for the brand or product. Let us now discuss the challenges of product branding. During the past few decades, we have seen a significant shift in value away from manufacturing toward design, marketing and customer service. This is in sharp contrast to the industrial age when manufacturing contributed the most value creation of all activities undertaken by firms. The industrial revolution was largely a revolution in manufacturing that led to a mobilization of resources and an increase in productivity beyond anything previously achieved throughout millennia of human civilization. The industrialization recipe also proved highly replicable, spreading across countries in Europe and North America before arriving in Asia. In just a few decades, industrialization catapulted Japan from an isolated feudal state to a modern industrial nation capable of defeating Russia, a major European power in war. Industrialization subsequently spread across Asia in what was often labeled the flying geese pattern during the 1980s. This initially transformed the tiger economies of Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea and Taiwan. Industrialization subsequently spread to other Asian countries including China, India, Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam. Market level challenges. We argue that there are three market level factors posing accepting challenges to Asian manufacturing firms which currently aspire to become branded. First firms from developing countries in Asia immediately compete on a sophisticated playing field where they meet competitors that in many cases have honed their branding skills for several decades. This makes the marketplace less forgiving compared to those firms which were branding pioneers during the 28th century. Given this, new Asian branders need to avoid a lengthy process of trial and error. Second, customer expectations are now higher because we live in a globalized society where customers can select a plethora of products from all corners of the world. They are no longer to largely domestically manufactured products. This means it simply takes more to get customers excited about a new product entering the market because there are often a large number of substitutes at hand. Third, the overall customer experience is increasingly becoming a critical component of the way not just service companies but also product companies compete. Just think about how critical customer experience is for the following product companies. Apple, BMW, IKEA, Louis Vuitton, Sony and Zara. Firm level challenges. Following the outline, we believe there are three firm level challenges making the transition especially taxing for new Asian brand. First, many of these firms have their roots in trading. This is especially so in the case of family owned firms. A trading mentality tends to focus on high turnover and low margin. Hence, it leads to a strong belief in the merits of a push strategy that is sales and channels rather than a pull strategy that is branding and positioning. Second, consistent with the higher power distance in Asian cultures, we find a greater reliance on management by fiat in the region. This is especially the case in family-owned firms where family owners dictate and hire managers who execute with less open distance. In contrast, we see a greater form of collaboration across levels in Western as well as in Japanese and Korean firms. Third, there is less willingness among new Asian branders to invest in market research as well as brand and strategy consulting services. This makes it harder for 
these firms to acquire the skills necessary to become successful at branding. This may be related to the higher power distance whereby owners and top managers are perhaps more inclined to think they already know what needs to be done. It may also be related to the trader mentality with its associated low margin business model, leaving little room to spend on projects with a long term return. As we have illustrated, there are significant challenges for new Asian branders at both the market level and the firm level. Management should make some more fundamental policy or strategic decision pertaining to branding. Some of the questions to be answered in formulating a branding strategy include the following. First, should we establish our own brand names or should we engage exclusively in reseller brands? Private labels or own label brands? This question is considered highly by medium-sized companies, which due to limited resources and specialized knowledge, prefer in many cases to sell their products without their own brand. However, it is important to bear in mind that notwithstanding the increased resources needed for establishing a brand in the market, there are also considerable benefits such as branding gives the seller the opportunity to attract a loyal and profitable set of customer, Brand loyalty gives sellers some protection from competition and greater control in planning their marketing programs. Strong brands help build the corporate image of making it easier to launch new brands and gain acceptance by distributor and consumer. Branding helps the seller to segment markets instead of Lever Brothers selling a simple detergent. It offers many detergent brands, each formulated differently and aim at specific benefit-seeking segment. The seller's brand name and trademark provide legal production of unique product features which competitors are otherwise likely to copy. The brand name makes it easier for the seller to process orders and track down problems. Ideally, a successful brand name becomes identified with a product category like for instance, aspirin, headache reliever, post-it notes, jeep, vehicles and tea full pants. However, this is not desirable when the customer refers to this specific brand, but she or he prefers a competitive one. For example, if he or she wants to buy a Jeep type of car, but at the end of the day chooses a Land Rover. A concept which is quite important in evaluating a brand's success is the so-called brand equity. This concept is related to a brand's strength in the market, that is, its acceptability, preference and loyalty. Business Week or Interbrands Annual Ranking of the 100 Most Valuable Global Brands Coca-Cola is at the top of the list with branding equity of INR 3370 billion followed by Microsoft INR 3070 billion and IBM INR 2690 billion. It is worth noting that US brands claim 8 out the top 10 spots with the exception of Finnish Nokia and Japanese Toyota. The interbred method in which the aforementioned ranking is based is considered as one of the most established methods of evaluating the equity of a brand. It uses various information including market leadership, stability, global reach and profitability.
Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. A brand is a symbolic embodiment of all the information connected to a company, product or service. The brand positioning exercise needs to take into account the existing competitive landscape in order to create a brand identity that is distinctive amongst competitors and relevant to the target market. Brand is a collection of images and ideas representing an economic producer. More specifically, it refers to the concrete symbols such as a name, logo, slogan and design scheme. A brand extension is when a company uses an established brand name to introduce a new product either in a new product category or as a line extension of the current product. The charisma of a brand seems to be socially constructed by giving the consumer association to emotional metaphors.